face to face at last, we finally get an in person interaction between John Jones and Tom Aspinall after months of going back and forth on Twitter. They come face to face in person. And in today's video, I'm going to react to them being face to face and having this interaction and just like the physicality of the two of them next to each other. And then. We're going to watch the actual video of their interaction, um, break down some of the moments. I know a lot of people are picking and, you know, selecting little parts of it and giving like their own psychological analysis on what that possibly could mean. Oh my God, John Jones's eyebrow on his right side raised by half a centimeter. This means that he's got Tom Aspinall in his sights and he's going to hunt him down. And I've seen some of the weirdest stuff from John Jones fans um, after this footage came out. Um, but I love that they had this interaction. I love that Tom Aspinall took it upon himself to be like, I'm in London right now. John Jones is also in London doing a fan meetup. This is my only opportunity I'm probably going to get anytime soon to meet up with John Jones in person. I'm going for it. Although I feel like Tom Aspinall maybe fumbled the face-off that they had against each other, I feel like he could have been a little bit more, you know, blunt and maybe like chucked out a one-liner that might have sounded cool and might have gotten under John Jones' skin. Um, but what I really think Tom Aspinall is, people misunderstand about Tom Aspinall, is he's very, very humble. And people don't, get that. You know, a lot of these John Jones fans, they just hear of Tom Aspinall being the guy to beat John Jones. And who's that Tom Aspinall guy saying he can beat John Jones? And they don't really hear like the way that Tom Aspinall says it. Like he's a very humble, good person. And I think he mainly wanted to come across as not a, not just some like goon that's going to trample John Jones's fan meet and greet. He actually wanted to come across as a respectful contender for John Jones. Um, so he immediately put his arm on John Jones's shoulder to, some people say measure reach, but when you look at it from this angle, it kind of seems like um, he's just trying to sort of, maybe little bro John Jones, because he's like, wow, you're not that big, you know, because Tom Aspinall is clearly a larger human than John Jones. So maybe it was a little bit of a, you know, when Bane, do you feel powerful? And he puts his rests his finger on that guy's shoulder do you feel in charge and then that's like a little bro moment where he just shifts the energy in the room and uh john jones as soon as tom aspinall tried to put his hand on his shoulder immediately takes it off and and tom aspinall's like oh no 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 i didn't mean anything by that um a lot of people are talking about this a lot of people are talking about this in the comment sections we're going to watch the full video of them interacting first and i'm going to give my reaction to it here we go well, do this quickly. Wait, do one. Just what saying hello. Just saying hello. Just saying hello. Just saying hello. We'll do this quickly. No, no harm done. You know what I mean? He just wants to get in uh, John Jones's presence, face to face with him. Feel feel his energy a little bit. What's going on, man? How are you? Hello, good man. They have a very nice interaction with each other. Now, a lot of people are like reading a lot into this, but from what I saw, really, I'm going to talk about some other things I noticed as well. It's just a nice interaction. Like, I think John Jones was like, oh, God. When you think of, like, a UK prospect, you think, oh, what the fuck is this guy going to say? What the fuck is this guy going to get up to? Because when you think UK prospect or UK slash Irish prospect, which are very, very similar cultures in the world, you think Conor McGregor, you think Darren Till, you think Paddy Pimlet, you think loudmouth, got a lot to say, probably going to try and humiliate you verbally. Um, so in meeting Tom Aspinall, I think John Jones was sort of at ease, like, oh, okay, he's not going to try any shit. He's just uh, shaking my hand and having a, a little nice meet and greet with him, you know? <laughs> and they play some music. He puts uh, his hand on John Jones' shoulder. John Jones moves it off. And then Tom Aspinall, this is his edit. Um, he says, wasn't having me check his reach. So apparently he was trying to just sort of frame off on John Jones with that arm. Maybe his plan was to keep it there and then straighten out his arm just to see how much distance he could get. Um, and then they keep going. Too, man. I would hope so. Respect, man. All the best. I would love to. Let's do it. I would love to. I would hope so, says John Jones. This is the energy that I'm seeing a difference between, in my honest opinion. First of all, when I see the two of them face off with each other, I know Aspinall has got some body fat on him, but when I see the two of them face off each with each other, I see a young, massively strong Tom Aspinall and I do see the more old man version of John Jones. I know a lot of people have been seeing this with John Jones recently. Um, with uh, 
whenever you see him on camera. I think it's the grayness in his beard that isn't doing him any favors. But there's been a lot of clips of John Jones since he's been recovering from his uh, pectoral injury. And uh, I'm finally seeing John Jones not as this monster, but you almost see a different side to John Jones where, yeah, there's this young athlete in Tom Aspinall that's fucking damn near six foot five, massive dude, strong, long reach, you know, big, big everywhere. Like he's got, he's not like a skinny leg dude, like a big guy like Tyson Fury. He's got weight in his legs, weight in his calves, his forearms next to John Jones's forearms as well. I mean, look at the size difference between them. This is a big, real heavyweight is what I'm trying to say. Um, and I think you could finally see like, oh, this guy, fi this guy makes John Jones look like the old man out of the two of them. And no one really does that with John Jones. We haven't really seen that with John Jones. Now, we've seen it maybe with Cyril Garn, but it's a lot more obvious here because for some reason, after that Cyril Garn fight and after he tore his pec, Jones has aged like 10 years, it feels like. I have no idea how it's happened, but he's rapidly aged and he's just gone past the age of 35 or might be 35, which is that age that we've been talking about recently in the MMA community. Um, but we get back to this clip. Thanks. All the best. Picture. Sure. Yeah. Let's get it. A face off. No, no, Just no. A, no. Oh, come on. Like, Jones almost was like, oh, come on. We were having a nice moment and you ruined it. Pushing for a face off instead of just a regular picture. Oh, okay. No, no problem. No problem. And then Tom goes, oh, no problem. No problem. No face off then. To me, the energy of this year, outside of Jones, where a lot of people are like acting, oh, dude, he's so alpha for moving Tom Aspinall's hand off of him which I think is good. It shows how aware John Jones is about the, the mind game side of combat sports um, because he wasn't going to give Aspinall any advantage or let him little bro him in any way. Um, but what I'm hearing here, even from this little moment here, of like, should we do a picture? Uh, yeah, sure. Face off. Should we do a face off? Oh, never mind. Sorry. And, and then it's like, oh, come on. Face off, really? It's almost like John Jones is... I'm just going to say how it is the way I see it. He's avoiding any type of language or behavior that will give any fire or flame to this fight actually happening. That's what I see it as. Even though Tom Aspinall wasn't as assertive and confident to say, come on, me and you next. There's nowhere else. There's no one else you can fight right now. He's not going to be that guy. That's just not Tom Aspinall. He's not going to go up there and say, don't fight that fucking old man, Stipe. I'm right here waiting for you with your interim belt. Fight me next. And no, he's not going to start that. That's not who Tom Aspinall is. But from the language we're hearing, let's make it happen, says Tom Aspinall. I'd love to. Let's make it happen. And then John Jones, I think he said something like, you know, it would be a good idea, you know, that would be great, you know, maybe someday, I think he eventually says. And then even here, when uh, Tom Aspinall says, let's do a face-off, John Jones is like, oh, come on. What, what is the problem with a face-off? You've just done it to each other anyway. Why not pose for one for a picture and then have it hype up the future fight between you guys? I don't see the problem with a face-off there. If I'm John Jones, right, and I'm knowing that I'm going to fight this guy someday, I don't see the problem with a face-off. He's a nice dude. He shook my hand. He said whatever. He's been cool. He's been cordial. Let's do a little face-off for fun at this fan meet and greet event. I don't understand why Jones wouldn't want to do that. And the only thing I can think about is the way he didn't say, yes, we're going to do it next when Tom Aspinall was talking about the idea of fighting each other. And in the way he turned down the face-off, it's like Jones doesn't want to commit himself to it yet. Because he doesn't know if he really wants to yet. I think what John Jones is thinking right now is like, damn, this pectoral injury. I'm 35. I'm getting old. I'm feeling it. Let me see how I feel when I come back against Stipe first. I don't want to lock myself into this Tom Aspinall matchup and say verbally that I'm going to fight him 100% or have a face-off with him that goes round that indicates that I am interested in fighting him just in case I don't feel like myself in that Stipe fight. And then it gives him the option to just sort of dip out and not have to go back on his word. So that's what I see it as. Not wanting to do a face-off. Um, not, um, not like using language that doesn't commit himself to doing the fight when Tom Aspinall's like, I'd love to, come on, let's make this fight happen. It just seems like he don't want to commit to this. Like he's almost annoyed that Tom Aspinall's put this social interaction on him. He was having fun. He was doing a fan meet and greet event. He was the man for that day. You know, he's John Jones, the big man in town. And then all of a sudden, Tom Aspinall walks in, mogs him, tries to get him to commit to saying that he wants to fight him. 
and then tries to get him to do a face-off that he then turns down. And I think the main expression that John Jones or the main emotion John Jones would be feeling from this is, oh, fucking what an annoying, why, why would you come? You know what I mean? Oh, just fuck off. I'm just trying to sort of lay low for a bit and do my meet and greet. And I don't want to have to get into all this with all the cameras around and ESPN MMA and all this type of stuff. So, yeah, I, I think that's what I took away from the situation. No problem. Plus, Tom Aspinall's massive. Like, I guess Jones is six foot three, and Aspinall's like a legit, real six foot four. But Aspinall's a massive dude to be clearly taller than John Jones. Now, I know, I know from a different angle, it might not look as much. But you've got to consider, dude, the problems that Jones has had in his career, throughout his career, have been against the six foot four, his size, his frame guys. He's never fought someone larger than him. Even against Cyril Garn. He kind of was a similar size to Cyril Garn, but Garn was a bit more dense for the division because he's a real heavyweight. Tom Aspinall is bigger than John Jones. That's great. Thank you, guys. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. I would love to have the honor one day. I'd love to have the honor one day, says Tom Aspinall. He's still trying to just get some kind of, you know, anything I can say right now to try and get a better chance to get that fight against John Jones, the heavyweight champion as the interim champion. I can't even believe we're having this discussion right now as to why there has to be this, like, Tom Aspinall convinces John Jones to fight the interim champion in this fucking division. I can't believe we're having this discussion, but you can see Tom Aspinall just keep chucking these little things out there. You know, would love to do it one day. Uh, let's get this fight done. Should we do a face-off? Um, you know, would love to make it happen at the end. Just chucking little... He just wants Jones to buy it and say yes, but he's not getting that. I would love to have the honor. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. One day. Maybe one day, he says. And you can see in Tom's face. Hope so, man. Hope so, man. Little fake grin to him. He don't want that answer. He wants yes. And he wants next. That's what he's been pushing for. And Jones has gone, you know, yeah, that would be a good idea, buddy. Yeah, I mean, on the first time that Aspinall brought up fighting him. And then Aspinall's like, face off. And he goes, oh, come on. Face off, really? Nah, let's just do a picture. And then it's like, I'd love to have, make that fight happen. Maybe one day, maybe one day, says John Jones. It's just like, ugh. All the best. All the He's like just dodging, dipping and moving out of the way and shoulder rolling all of this commitment to the Tom Aspinall fight, basically. All the best. How's everything? It's healing. So it's slowly but surely. Okay. All the best, man. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, man. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Now, I've seen clips, yeah, of that last bit where people just sort of zoomed in on John Jones looking at Aspinall moving away. And they've said, like, dude, you can almost see the killer in his eyes. I, I swear to God, John Jones fans are like the original Pereira fans and sometimes even Oliveira fans. They're just gay for the fighter is what they are. Like, simple as that. A lot of them are just gay for him, it feels like. Because a lot of the John Jones fans, I've seen, like, slowed down edits of Aspinall walking away there and Jones looking at him like, dude, he's such a hunter. You can see that he's just put the target on Tom Aspinall's back. You could see the look in his eyes as he narrowed them and he saw his prey. I've seen comments like that around. And I guess we can go through some of the comments and read some of them. So should we start with this one? Just went full white screen there for a second. Should we start with these comments here? So we got some mixed up emotions about this. We've got Bones wrecks him in his prime, but I don't know about now, to be honest. You know what I mean? So that's something. And that's a good bit of... We need that doubt. That's what makes a fun matchup. There's no doubt in the Stipe fight. Jones is doing everything he can to fight old Stipe for legacy, but is ducking the real challenger. This is objectively true. Aspinall's the interim champ. Jones is the undisputed champ. In my opinion, Aspinall's belt might be as impressive because it's not like Jones beat the lineal champion, which I'm... I'm sick of people talking about, you know, like Jones's belt is the real one. I know he's more accomplished than Tom Aspinall, but he didn't beat Ngannou for it. He didn't beat a champion for it. He fought for a vacant belt. So did Tom Aspinall, arguably against a more credentialed heavyweight in Sergei Pavlovich at the time, who had just smoked Curtis Blades, you know? Cyril Garn had beaten, like, what, Taito Ivasa before he won that fight against John Jones? Like, it's, uh, you know what I mean? It's an uh, interesting dynamic there. Um, Tom lost to Curtis Blades. He just didn't. Like, he, his leg snapped. I know it's an official loss on his record, but Jones fans chucking this out is the biggest cope ever, and it's almost proof that they don't even pay attention to the sport. 
Look at this. Aspinall mauls him. John Jones fans won't like to hear that. These are the comments that we want. When have you ever heard this in the build-up to a John Jones fight? You haven't. And I know a lot of people are like, Jones is... Be, look, I'll, I'll go through this in a second. Tom Lusk, Jones by KO. Next question. When, other than in a fight where John Jones was had it overturned to a no contest because he tested positive for performance enhancing drugs, has he got a KO win that's that nasty? Like, what, ground and pounded Gustafson in a rematch? Smith beat Gustafson around that time. Anthony Smith. Like, in a similar fashion as well. Got him down and Gus was just lost on the ground. Jones by KO, next question, is insane. If you want to say Jones outgrapples him and subs him, say it. Jones by KO, like it's some foregone conclusion, is literally such delusion because Jones has never KO'd anyone. Like, really? Like, he's not a KO guy. He's TKO'd a few guys. One got overturned, so it don't count. And the other one was a ground and pound one. But who else does Jones... I mean, really think, what is a Jones TKO? Since he got the belt. I know he got TKOs on the way up. You know what I mean? Like against Shogun with the body shot and the knees. But like, there ain't... Spinning elbow behind the head from uh, on Stefan Bonner. I guess that was a TKO. Like, he hasn't really shown that recently in his, in his, in his game. Since when do you win fights based on height? That's because the caption is Tom Aspinall shows he has the height advantage, which I think is stupid. And then this one, which we're going to get back to. Y'all acting like Jones ain't faced every young hungry dude for the past fucking 10 years and one. This person doesn't know of John Jones's career. Okay, we're going to go through some other comments as well. We'll get back to that one. Jones said, look at these comments here. Jones really said, I ain't never fighting you. Like, they're literally, like, laughing at blatant ducking from John Jones, basically. <laughs> Which is insane. Uh, Jones said, move your hand. I ain't about that friendly shit. Jones has always been a genius as a fighter. Displays it even here. I get it. He's psychologically thinking, like, I'm not going to let this guy put his hand on my shoulder. All the baiters thinking John was intimidated. I don't think Jones was intimidated. I think he was just put off by it and annoyed by it. Like, fuck, man. I'm trying to get out of this game right now. I'm trying to beat Stipe and have my sunset moment now that Nganu got smoked by AJ and call myself the baddest man on the planet forever. Don't make me commit to this Tom Aspinall fight. It's dangerous. I don't think he's intimidated to where he thinks he'll lose, but I think he's intimidated to where he's like, fuck, dude, this is the guy that's going to beat me. Let me get out after the Stipe fight. Tom would beat Jones in one round. Strong statement. But if, jo if Tom is going to win, it's going to be in the first round, likely. John's never fighting Tom. Bro wants to ghost of Stipe and will dip. Only person John Jones is scared of is himself. He's actually said he was scared of Rampage once. John's would destroy this boy. Look at this. The fact that what some of you think Tom has the slightest chance against John is crazy. One kick and his knees will buckle. Who do they think John Jones is? Tom Aspinall. Is that who they think he is? Like, Tom Aspinall's the guy with under a minute average fight time in the UFC. The fastest in UFC history. And he's doing it against ranked heavyweights. Aspinall's the guy with under a minute average fight time. The fastest in UFC history. The shortest average fight time in UFC history. That's Tom Aspinall. That's not John Jones. Five rounder John Jones. It's like they think John Jones is Tom Aspinall. Like, what? Jones wants absolutely no part of that man. This is good because we need this if Jones does sail off into the sunset. If Aspinall remains champ while Jones is gone, we need the narrative to be that Jones didn't want to fight him. It helps the business. <laughs> this is true, but people think you're a hater if you mention it because he has cheated on PEDs and beats women. So many casuals. I don't know why people think uh, John is scared of this dude. His fight IQ is the best in the game, maybe. Even his moment, he shows that Tom's trying to play checkers while John is playing chess. This is the gay shit I'm talking about. Not even comparable. For those who are reading this and thinking John's scared, well, you a clown. <laughs> but look, I want to read you some of the other comments. Some here. Uh, let's be real. Jones sleeps this guy first round. Who do they think Jones is? He's not Tom Aspinall, little bro. Like, I don't know who these guys have been watching over the past few years. Let's be real, Jones sleeps this guy first round. If Jones lost, he'd lose his mind. His ego couldn't handle it. That, that thought that was a little weird on Jones's part. Stop the dominant behavior. That's, yeah, that's something. 
Anyone that thinks Aspinall would win in any scenario is delusional. <laughs> like, it's like... Like, I like the Jones fans, but they're... They are conveniently trying to paint it out like it's not even worth John Jones' time to try and fight Tom Aspinall. Because I think, honestly, Tom Aspinall fans and people that think Tom Aspinall beats John Jones know that Jones is still dangerous for him. Like, I know that Curtis Blades is still dangerous for Tom Aspinall. I really do. I know that Garn is still dangerous for Tom Aspinall. I think he beats him. I think he beats John Jones, but I know that Jones is dangerous. Jones fans, on the other hand, though, think John Jones beats Aspinall, they say, but they conveniently don't want to see it happen. Like, it's so clear that Jones beats Aspinall that it's not even worth his time to try and fight him. Which is really convenient to never find out if you're right or wrong about your hypothesis. Whereas Aspinall fans want to know the answer. And as far as the face-off shows, Aspinall wants to know the answer, and Jones kind of doesn't from the looks of things. You know, I also want to talk about this comment here that we saw. Um, right here. Y'all acting like Jones ain't faced every young, hungry dude for the past 10 fucking years and won. Now, this is a very liked comment. With not a lot of backlash to it as well. Y'all acting like Jones ain't faced every young, hungry dude for the past fucking 10 years and won. I want to take you through Jones's record. And tell you exactly why this Tom Aspinall fight must happen. This is John Jones's record. Okay? As you can see here. So it's John Jones's record. And if you go through it, after all the cancelled fights due to PED tests, find me the young, hungry up and comer. Cyril Garn was one of them. But before the Cyril Garn fight at heavyweight, who was the young, hungry up and comer? The answer was, it was Dominic Reyes. This is Jones's prime. Dominic Reyes was the young, hungry up-and-comer. Reyes just flat out beat the shit out of Jones and won the fight. Like, it was a close one. I think it was 3-2. I don't know how a judge had it 4-1 Jones. I think it was very clearly 3-1 Reyes. And if anyone won 4-1, it was Reyes because he rocked Jones at the start of the fourth. Um... That was the young, hungry up-and-comer that Jones faced. The only one of his career, by the way. The only one. And basically beat him. Everyone else is older than John Jones by multiple years. What's John Jones? 35. Santos is like 40. Anthony Smith, I believe, is the same age as John Jones. 35. Gustafson is 37. He was older than John Jones. And he nearly beat him the first time. Um... Daniel Cormier is 40-something, way older than John Jones. I think like 10 years older than John Jones. And that was overturned to a no contest because John Jones tested positive for performance-enhancing drugs. Um, OSP is like 40-something as well. DC, again, way older than John Jones. Glover, way older than John Jones. Gustafson the first time, older than John Jones. But he was considered the young guy. Still older than John Jones by multiple years. Chael's in his 40s. He's nearly 10 years older than John Jones. So is Vitor Belfort. He's an old dude. And by the way, are you noticing something? Middleweight Chael Sonnen, middleweight Vitor Belfort. Rashad Evans is the frame of a middleweight man. He's in his 40s, way older than John Jones. Leota Machida, middleweight sized man, in his 40s, way older than John Jones. Rampage Jackson. I swear to God, Rampage is like 5'11. Way older than John Jones in his 40s. Same with Shogun, middleweight-sized man in his 40s. Same with Ryan Bader. I guess you can look at Matyashenko and Brandon Vera was older than him. Um, Stefan Bonner was older than him, obviously. And other than that, what, Parker Porter was maybe the only young up-and-comer that he fought? <laughs> like, the, the only young up-and-comer Jones has ever fought is Reyes. And he arguably lost, and then he beat Garn. Who was a young up-and-comer? I get that but fucking had the worst performance ever, ever in a title fight ever. I've um, never seen anything like it. But I want to see Jones Aspinall. I do think Aspinall kind of fumbled the face-off, um, which we'll go through here. I do think he kind of fumbled it because I would have loved to, him have, to have said something like, I know I'm the guy to beat you and you know I'm the guy to beat you. Or you know I'm the guy to beat you, right? You know I'm the guy to beat you, right? I can see it in your eyes. I wish he would have said something like that. 
Or just even like when they pulled each other in for a one-armed hug. Have you ever been fingered by an MMA fighter? What would it take? You know what I mean? And Jones maybe will say, Ah, ha, ha, you're so silly. It takes beating blades first. <laughs> Good old straight Jones. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching Toodle Pip. I'll see you later. Goodbye.